When we were young, we were easily inspired. Whether it was the first time we used a microscope, read a biography, picked up an instrument, or saw the stars, it used to be that learning readily precipitated inspiration. We say we are lifelong learners, but what happened to the inspiration that used to accompany learning? Today, the notion of inspiration seems somehow frivolous. We tell ourselves we can get by without it. We're adults, or at least that's what they keep telling me, so we do what we have to do. We have deadlines to meet, appointments to keep, and responsibilities to fulfill. Our ability to manage those obligations helped bring us to Harvard and will no doubt help us succeed as alumni. But do you remember the first time you felt inspired? Can you tap into that flicker of exhilaration inside you that made you feel in that moment invincible? Or if not, do you wonder why? What would you do differently today if you felt inspired now? Instead of trying to inspire you myself, because I wouldn't even know where to start with that, I'm going to give you three reasons that we need inspiration and challenge you to take an ownership of the individual quest to find it so that we can remain as dedicated to a life of inspiration as we are to a life of learning. First, inspiration is humanizing. It makes us human beings. Second, inspiration is activating. It makes us do things. And third, inspiration is formative. It makes us who we are. Inspiration makes us. In his celebrated book, Sapiens, Yuval Noah Harari explains the cognitive revolution and Homo sapiens' ability to communicate abstractions, fictions, and myths as the defining characteristic of our species. He says it's what allowed us to conquer the world. To me, this means that the ability to see beyond the reality we face today, articulate how we might change it, and collaborate to make it happen is a uniquely human ability. It literally makes us human. Besides this, inspiration further humanizes us by engendering greater humanity and empathy because it invites us to see in others what we might be capable of ourselves. This idea of potential capability leads us to the second reason we need inspiration. It's activating and makes us do things. Growing up, I played soccer. Or I should say I was on soccer teams, but I spent a lot more time on the bench than I did actually playing. Whenever I was subbing into the game, my dad would give me a pep talk. Neither he nor I were under any illusions about my ability to produce an act of athletic heroism, but his words were always the same. Go be dangerous. Make something happen. If you'd asked me then why I, as someone with at best mediocre talent, remained dedicated to playing soccer, I'm sure I'd have rattled off platitudes about love of the game. But looking back, I'm convinced that the reason I loved and played soccer was because in 1999, when I was seven, in a rare lifting of the household ban on daytime TV, I watched the U.S. women's national soccer team defeat China in nail-biting penalty kicks to win the World Cup. That is the first time I remember feeling inspired. If you're not a soccer fan, this may not resonate with you. But the significance of the story is the connection between inspiration and action. Because I was inspired by the 1999 World Cup, I didn't just want to watch soccer. I wanted to play. That game and that team made me believe, even as a sub, when I stepped on the field, anything was possible. I could be dangerous and make something happen. As the HBS club soccer team can tell you, 20 years later, my abilities remain thoroughly unremarkable. But I've carried the inspiration of the 1999 World Cup beyond the pitch in unanticipated ways. I spent my last semester at Harvard researching the women's national soccer team's campaign for pay equity, and now preparing to leave Harvard's hallowed halls and horrible Zoom rooms I feel the same butterflies I felt as a sub on the soccer sideline. I'm excited but intimidated by the challenges that lie ahead and filled with uncertainty about my ability to influence the outcome, or as HBS likes to say, to make a positive difference in the world. Feeling that way, my dad's words come back to me. Make something happen. Our graduation from Harvard is a celebration of the work we've done to reach this moment. All of us. Not just students, but the family, friends, faculty, and staff who have worked alongside us and to support us for far longer than the years we've been here. 
And for all of us, the last few years have required more work than most. The long tail of the pandemic, the reverberations of political upheaval in many countries around the world, the looming threat of climate change, gun violence, and the social cleavage of a racial reckoning centuries in the making are daunting. The losses many of us have experienced, especially with the passing of a member of our own class, weigh heavily upon us. How can we remain clear-eyed about the world's problems and imperfections and still believe we're capable of making anything happen? How can we even seriously contemplate inspiration? But that's the irony. If we dismiss inspiration as mere whimsy, the work feels impossible. Think for a moment what inspires you. A person, a song, an amazing feat of engineering, a favorite sermon, a well-formatted spreadsheet. It could be anything. It's there though, isn't it? Before your brain gets the better of you, just be inspired for a second. By now, I bet you've already realized the person who came to mind was flawed, or you're hedging whether the song you picked is the musician's best work, or you've thought of and dismissed four things that are not truly inspiring, or maybe nothing came to mind and you're wondering what's wrong with you. Relax. This is my point. Our life experiences and educations have taught us to think critically and carefully. This is a tremendously valuable and necessary skill. The problem is we have learned to think so critically that we've become debilitatingly critical, which makes it exceedingly difficult to find inspiration. I promise you there is no shortage of inspiration in the world, but allowing ourselves to be inspired is harder. It takes effort and practice. We could wait for inspiration to strike in a perfect, rare, pristine lightning bolt, but our propensity to critique means we're likely to be disappointed. Instead, we should be integrators of inspiration, gathering disparate sparks, individually limited but collectively powerful, into a roaring flame. What if we granted people the grace to be imperfect, yet capable of inspiring us to exceed their example? We could allow for the limitations of leaders, but find inspiration in their impact. We could look past our differences of opinion to be inspired by the passion of an opponent. What if we read more broadly, ventured more widely, and observed more openly? What inspiration might we find if we only decided to look? At the U.S. presidential inauguration in January, Amanda Gorman expressed the importance of choosing to look for those sparks when she said, there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it if only we're brave enough to be it. We need both, the critical eye that sees the changes the world needs and the bravery to be inspired. This is the power of imagination and abstraction that makes us human. Armed with the flame of inspiration, we will believe ourselves capable of igniting change, of making something happen. Amanda Gorman's poem is called The Hill We Climb. And it reminded me of something else I'd heard about hills. My high school cross country coach told us races are won on hills, not on the ascent, but in that first step after the climb levels out. When everyone else in the race is glad just to have reached the top, who would have the tenacity to take an explosive few steps, crest the hill and pull ahead? We have all been straining up a hill for some time. Today, as we stand at the zenith, graduating with vaccines proliferating and the hope of a new tomorrow glimmering on the horizon, we have a choice to make. Do we look behind us, proud of the struggle we've endured, or do we dig deep and accelerate into what lies ahead? When we are integrators of inspiration, we illuminate our lives and those around us. Within us, we find not only that we can climb the hill, but that we can explode into the next one. This is the third reason we need inspiration. The inspiration we integrate makes us who we are, and more. There's something about true inspiration that doesn't just infiltrate us, it elevates us. Today, I've talked about human evolution, sports, and poetry, I'm not an evolutionary biologist, anthropologist, athlete, English major, or poet, but that doesn't mean these things can't inspire me or become a part of me. 
I find inspiration in the sax solo of a jazz song I can't name, in the lines of a T.S. Eliot poem that I've read hundreds of times but still don't fully understand, in my friends founding companies and raising families, which I can't even imagine doing, and in countless other fragments of our multifaceted lives. As an integrator of inspiration, you get to choose the sparks that speak to you, that ignite your fire. We tend to think of inspiration as something that happens to us. But what if we took it upon ourselves to create within us the necessary conditions for inspiration to take root? What if we loosened the white-knuckled, clenched fists that keep us in control and allowed ourselves to be moved? In an age of Instagram, what if we dared to be more than influenced? What if we were inspired, deeply, viscerally, inexorably inspired? I believe in the power of inspiration to humanize us, to activate us, and to shape us. I don't know what inspires you, but I have confidence that you will find it. And I believe that we're, when we're inspired, we can do otherwise impossible things. Like talk myself into addressing thousands of people for graduation from a school I still can't even believe let me enroll. It's why I'm here today. Not because I'm in any way inspiring, but because I have been inspired, oftentimes, by you. Class of 2021, a million individual convergent choices brought us together to share this time at HBS. After today, a million more divergent choices will take us on miraculously divergent paths. I can't wait to watch you thrive. But today, let's make one last choice together. Let's choose to be integrators of inspiration. Let's go out there and make something happen.